All right, folks, this is a good one. It's a crew show, plus Christian James Hand is in studio with us. I went to the Sphere to see you 2 with Christian, and we recap an unbelievable concert experience, plus a 600-mile road trip in my Bentley Turbo R. Oh, yes, and today's main topic is our five favorite GT cars of all time, elegant, elegant grand tourers we'd like to take a road trip with, plus we've got Got a whole lot of Patreon questions, and we learn a whole lot about speakers and lights. It's the Smoking Tire Podcast. Let's go. We're good. Yeah? Ya existe? And then Scaglietti. Scaglietti. Finished, yeah. finished the project. Scaglietti is all right. Yeah? Guys, guys are all right. right it's all right? Yeah. What up, folks? Happy Sunday. Really fucking thought it was Saturday. For some reason, the drive home from Vegas yesterday felt like Sunday, and then today felt like Saturday. I was like, let's go to the farmer's market, baby. And we went to the farmer's market. Got there like, there's no farmer's market. It's Sunday. That's what happens. We got fucked on that deal. Christian James Hand is in studio. Yes, we drove the Bentley back in time. Uh, shout out to Huey Lewis Gotta for, go that, mark, mark, mark. for that one. Uh, don't get us fucking botted. All right. No, yeah, no singing. <laughs> no two sing- in- on key. <laughs> Goddamn yeah, musical yeah. black magic over there. Uh, what's up, everybody? Today's uh, today's main topic is going to be our five favorite GT cars of all time, and uh, inspired by the fact that Christian and I just mm-hmm. went on a grand tour in. The Bentley Turbo R. What a we're, ride! We're doing headphones today. I just prefer it's from the radio thing. I keeps prefer you in the them. zone. It keeps me in the in the the SM7B zone. I'll just do it just to 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 feel like you, You're like a pro. I wish I was as cool as you, Zach. And we inspired Zach to do it as well. See, I like Whoa. it. Now we're all headphones. Now we're all doing radio. It sounds like it. Uh, yeah, longest trip uh, so far in the Bentley. Yeah, six hundred miles. Boom! Fucking aced it. Aced it. Aced it. Yeah. God damn, do I love that car. It's uh, It might be the perfect road trip vehicle. It's very good. It's very good. And being in the back seat of it with the little uh, the little angled foot wedges <laughs> just yeah. gives you uh, just a yeah. sense of decorum and and a, a, like, a, like a gravitas right. that you don't have in the back of a Toyota Corolla right. on the drive out to Vegas. Uh, Christian invited us to go with him to the Sphere to see you two for the... Fifth time? This is my fifth. Fifth time to go yep. to the Sphere for that. And, uh, of course, an opportunity to take the Turbo R, stretch its legs. Which should pertinent. never be skipped. And then, um, like, a couple days before we go, and he's like, hey, do you mind if, if my friend Adam comes with us? And, which, of course, I did not mind, and he is a lovely guy. I lovely. really enjoy his company. But I said to Hannah, I said, Christian wants to bring a friend. And she said, okay, that's cool. And I said, I'll tell you this, I'm not moving my goddamn seat up. <laughs> I don't care how tall this guy is. And then when Christian got in the car, he's like, he's kind of a, he's kind of a, he's like, he's at least probably six three. He's a big yeah, guy. Whoa. Yeah. Fortunately, plenty of room in the Turbo R. Did so not, much room. Did not have to move the seat up. Nope. He was good. Even with his gout. Even even with his yeah, poor, poor bastard. Guy, poor bastard in his gout. Um, but uh, yeah, six hundred miles. Fucking no notes. Car. No notes. Fifteen miles per gallon. Not uh, bad at all. And and it's it's it was really interesting because like. Is that that's better than the G wagon, right? Better, Slightly. Than, yeah. better than the G double uh, almost. Can, no, can, conditions were not identical. Okay. The G wagon, a, a lot more traffic. Um, there, there was the, the overall speed was a little slower because of the, the volume of cars and the traffic, but same distance, you know, and uh, thirty years newer for the G wagon. Three times the number of gears yep. <laughs> on, the, on the transmission, yep. and uh, yeah, the Bentley did did fifteen zero on the way home from Vegas, which is and if yeah. I may, Matthew, I'm fairly sure way much more love from surrounding cars than we would have received yeah. in the G wagon. We Very would have been overlooked and maligned, agreed. I believe. Totally invisible. Although when I did take the G wagon to Vegas, I got a compliment from the Wynn valet who really liked the color. Great. The green, he he was all about the green. Sure. And I don't blame him. It was superior. Um, However, but rolling uh, up and down Coval and Sands uh, in the Bentley Three different, maybe four, four different people stopped me at lights. All young people, yep. yeah, all all of them under probably forty. Mm-hmm. Dude, that fucking car is awesome. And asking about it, a- amazed at the condition. Young people, guy in a three series, a guy in a Volkswagen, just full on approvals everywhere in this car. 
I think I think we're on the beginnings of a a rising tide for the Turbo R. I think young people are all of a sudden realizing yeah, yeah. what they have been sleeping on for the last decade regarding this car. Well, there, I mean, it was big in hip hop when yeah. we were young, so yes. we saw the cars. That's but back true. Then, they it were two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and yeah. Now they're not. This is this is a fucking classy car. Uh, wait, you're not. You're so not a shitbag driving one of these no. things. These young people are like, that is fucking awesome. You are the man driving that. It is the Nick Cage moment. You are a connoisseur. <laughs> it's totally accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's and, and people were super, super stoked on it. Um, now, we, right. we know you got yours for a crazy price. What is the what is the street level purchase price for? For one this nice. Yeah, for, for yours, had it's you It's probably not, 40 grand. Which still. It's still like ridiculous. Reasonable. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. Even if you it's got a lot it, of car. Even if you spent 40. It feels like way more than forty grand of coolness, right? You know, um, and your street cred is way more through than the fu- forty through grand. The roof. Yeah, through, through, through the roof. Do you want a new Camry or yeah? Rice. No, for sure. Uh, and it and once you hit third gear, <laughs> you you don't come out of third gear. You're in third gear from forty to one hundred and forty miles an hour, right? All the way. Yeah, there's no gear up, change up the fucking up the big hill up the giant mountain. Top gear. Same gear. Same gear. Same gear. Just chill it. That's the show for Chilling. Bentley. Same, same gear. Same gear. Same, same gear. Um, <laughs> dual zone climate control. At one point, we had the AC on the top and the heat on the bottom. That's lovely. You can run both at the same time. That's very good. That is advanced. And uh, But the one thing we need to have adjusted, and we, I might make a video out of it. Talk to Donnie about this. The on-center steering is very sharp. And so if you don't have really, really soft touch on the wheel... You can get a little. It can get a little wobbly at oh. like eighty miles an hour. It's a little wobbly with Hannah. With Hannah, because she doesn't. Helm, she right. doesn't have the. No disrespect to Hannah, but if you don't have like the touch, right? Like really light two fingers, it can get a little walk, walk, walk. And so Donnie said, "There's a way to. You can get an alignment that will dial that out." Oh right, uh, yeah. So Change you can you can relax right. the steering a bit and make it a little more a little more dead on center, so it's not as sensitive. To that, so like, all right, cool. We'll just we'll just do that. He said you can't go to one of those laser spots. You got to go to, to guy. his guy yeah, yeah. in Lancaster. <laughs> yeah, with like fucking Twine, fishing probably. line, <laughs> who doesn't take appointments. First right. come, first cash serve. Only. Pay, yeah, you pay him in cash and sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then he asks you for a favor when he's done. <laughs> and first names only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll have to we'll make a video out of that, out of adjusting the. But he's, Donnie said once you dial that alignment, and then you're yeah, then you're, you're golden. Go. But. Uh, uh, fucking superior, superior motoring. Yeah, yeah they're cool. Um, and I will say the uh, the Euro spec headlight combo mm. as well is yeah the French lights. Ooh, it looks mm. so nice. It does. It's yeah. cherry. It's it does. It does. The front end takes on a different feel yeah. when you do that. To it's it. like slightly more aggressive. Yeah. but without without toning the class down. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's like the quiet guy who you're like, I don't want to fuck with that dude. It's the you know Vinnie Jones <laughs> right, he's headlight Vinnie. mod. <laughs> Mine says it Desert should... <laughs> Eagle, 0. 0.5 up. Oh. It should be called um, the Vinnie Jones. Have yeah, you Vinnie yeah. Jones your, uh, your Bentley R, by the way? But what we, you know, you realize he's, it, it, when you have back seat passengers, they didn't, uh, not just Bentley, but like nobody put air vents in no. the back. Until like the mid 90s, mid to late 90s. And so you kind of have to like crank the AC in the front to get the air to the back. Yeah. But and also no if, cup holders. If I, well, the no cup holders thing is crazy. But also, if you think about it, in England, right. you wouldn't really, until of course the sun collides with the planet, which is inevitable, <laughs> um, you wouldn't actually need the AC <laughs> to be able to shoot into the back right. as you cruise around the Cotswolds. But you might want the heat to shoot back the there. Heat, I mean, sure, something... but the heat, of course, does things Permeates. in the air yeah, yeah, easier right. than the cool right. does. And you, if you're up front and you're getting blasted with freezing right. cold air, it's different than getting blasted with some warmth. But with so we did. They did recommend how we could. You could the center vents. You can sort of yep. shoot them down the middle. You're describing exactly what we've done with our dog for the last two years because <laughs> we didn't have rear vents and yeah, we have yeah. to aim it down the middle and yeah. he'd sit there and yeah. wait and, yeah. and the new car is going to have that. But yeah. yeah. So it's that's a big game that, changer. that and cup holders are really the big advancements. 
that However, would... we did find the uh, the Nike Air Force One variant where you can just put those on the center bit and then just I've put been, your, yeah. your water in there, which is what I did. It worked perfectly. Well, we, you know that from coming with me in the red car. Right. The red car, you have to, if you ride with me, you have to ride with my shoes yep. sitting under your knees, but you can also then use that shoe, <laughs> that shoe as a, as as a cup, cup holder. holder. That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> <laughs> and because my NBs are like so wide and stable, got a good stance. Got that's a pretty good uh, <laughs> (laughs) Pretty good cup holder for that. (laughs) And it keeps the drink warm, maybe. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, So, I mean, this fucking Bentley, it, 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 yes, it cost us a little money to get her, get her going, but God damn, does this thing just make me happy. Worth it. Everything about it just makes me so happy. And it's just so, like, old luxury cars are not typically interesting. You have to get to a certain level of ridiculous. Like, if we had, if this was like a, a 1993 Mercedes, it, that would not be that right. interesting. Right. But because it's like so opulent for that period, it just becomes wonderful. What's wild is you could spend as much or more than you spent to get a 90s Mercedes or an 80s yeah. Mercedes or one of those turbo diesel yeah. wagons. Was, Dude, you get really a clean. 500E for forty five, fifty thousand dollars and yeah. it would not be as cool, fun, or nice as this. Yeah. It may be more reliable in the long term. Yeah. But that's not what we're here for. Mm-hmm. You know? Like you said, the, I'm here for a good time, not a long with time. The planet. We're yeah. here for the short term. <laughs> yeah. Also I think that the you're aided by the color. Just classy. The color of yours is a it's a bit gangster, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like there's you don't see in your br- like I don't remember seeing I remember seeing silver ones and green ones. But like that particular, it's not an old man spec, right? Like it's not like. Don't get me wrong. If this car happened to be Jewish racing gold, <laughs> I would have bought it even faster than I bought this one. Terrible color. I know, but in the right car, <laughs> there's an there's an irony to it that could be fun. It's, okay. right. it's one of our divisions. This it's one, fine. this one happens to be the right color. Yeah. yeah. For a young person to right. be to be driving. Now I noticed that there was a note on the post that you made about it, where someone said something about the tires. Yeah, are the tires on this a, uh, like a, a bigger, str- harder to get spec than yes. regular tire? Oh, they only are only one size. There's only one per company that makes the tire that fits this. It's the only car ever made that has this size tire. I well, I don't want to say ever. It's the only car. Th- yeah, it might be ever. I, nobody else makes the tire. Avon Turbo Speed is the actually. What? It sounds like a garbage tire. It's actually not. It's actually a, a really well made English tire. Of course, of course. Well, yes. they they make a lot of retro performance sizes. When I was yeah. shopping for tires for the Cobra, two companies made tires that fit. There was BFG, and then there was this company. Yeah. And these are four times the price. But they're yeah. like, if you want like a good racing tire for a 14 inch wheel for an old Alpha or something, they might sell it. Wow. They, they're yeah. five hundred dollars a corner, Jesus. which is which is which would be what you'd pay. I mean, it's more than you'd pay for a Corvette tire or a Viper tire or right. a, or a, a top a, a modern high performance big tire. Now, with the size of the tire, does that give you more? Is it is that comfort based? Is that why you would need a tire of that spec? Well, it's or is you know, it a the, visual? No, no. Uh, I mean, the the wheel is a fifteen inch wheel, right? Um, and be, because there's a unique bolt pattern just for that car, of course. you actually really can't even put aftermarket wheels on it. And oh. Yeah, you'd have to have a fully, fully custom, custom set of wheels. Right. And to get that size, which is a 255, 65, 15, nobody makes that. No, They haven't put 15-inch wheels on cars in 28, 5, 5 30 wow. years. So this is the last company that makes tires, so they really rake you over the coals. Yeah, of course. You could get a tire that's like, eh, and and you see in the cheap ones when people go to sell one of these for like ten grand on Craigslist or whatever, it's got some. It doesn't quite look right because the tire is not quite the right size because they get a two thirty five or a fucking whatever, and it's like it it won't drive right. 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 So it's like, eh, just you just suck it up. You get the right tire, and then and and. It's like one of those things that it could cause other problems later. Right. You want it to ride right. You want it to stop and turn right. And this is the tire that the car came with new. Like, just fucking put the right tire on there, you know? That's the that's how you keep it running good and, like, valuable and driving like it's supposed to drive is to do that. Man. Right. There's not a really a better way. Well, of course. So you suck it up and you buy the right tire. That's what, if you could buy a Bentley? 
You get the bloody tires. I don't want to do headphones anymore. <laughs> I'm making my head hot. Matter of fact, I don't want to do hat either. I might go oh, in. Oh, wow. But it's just, I think maybe the coffee is just making my head hot. Don't want to do it. It does do that. It's the caffeine. Yeah. Bingo. Um, so anyway, uh, enough about the Bentley. It's fucking great. It's there, great. We had no issues. and uh, 10 out of 10, no notes. Going out, of, going out of town this week, so I put it downstairs here at WCCS where it can live its best charmed, battery-tended life. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit of a panic before we left, as I do. I, you know, my weekly panic. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you know about this. Weekly? Sure. Weekly yeah. Bi-weekly, bi-weekly panic. <laughs> Occasionally try, depending <laughs> on the way, the, whether the week's really trying uh, you or not. <laughs> yeah. uh, went down to go get it before the trip. Right. And the rear was a little, little saggy because it's a hydraulic suspension. It's got that North Carolina squat. T- it turns out that uh, if the car sits for four or five days, which it did before, before our road trip because I was driving the M3 competition, the hydraulic fluid will will bleed back into the system and out of the shocks, and that will happen. You start it up, mm-hmm. and in about 60 seconds, it comes back oh, to, cool. to ride It citrons height. itself? Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. It does, in Citron fact, itself. It does, in fact, citroen <laughs> itself. Uh, same same <laughs> shit. And so, so, yeah, that's how you know if one has been sitting for five days or more. If I may, for totally your, normal. Uh, your uh, anxiety, that was uh, an integral part of the choice of fourth passenger for the trip, by the way. I did take that into note. Oh, yeah. Where I was like, hmm, because I know. Bless you. Thank you. So the first invitation went out to Zach, yes, who unfortunately... Which- <laughs> was in the middle of boxing up Tupperware. I, and I listen, you can move any day, but boy did you miss out. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you fucking missed so out. So, I I so then I was like, okay, so it was officially originally it was gonna be Leo and then it was Zach and then I was like, all right, who else? And my, my buddy Adam, who was the bass player my was the phone screener at my radio show back in the or mid nineties. And then was in the bass player in all of my bands and all that, and I love him so much. And I was like, oh, he's perfect, because his sense of humor, I mean, him nailing the, um, the I just checked barn off of my oh, yeah. <laughs> callback yeah. like three days after we had done the original. Solid individual. Solid individual. Hannah had, Hannah had like road trip bingo sheets made up. Of so. course. Folks, got to take a quick break for our sponsor, Off The Record. You know them. You love them. Everyone loves them. How could they not? All they want to do is help people. If you get pulled over for any moving violation at all, don't plead guilty. That's for suckers. That's not the American way. Even though I know you just want to get it over with, get on with your life, all that, I understand, but it's not going to happen without OTR. Download that Off The Record app and use code TSTPOD for 10% off all legal services at Off The Record. What they do is set you up with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction in which you got uh, that ticket. They fight that ticket on your behalf. And if they don't get those points off your record, boy, you don't pay them a thing. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST on web or download the Off The Record app and use code TSTPOD to save 10% off all legal services with Off The Record. We love them. I use them myself at least once a year. Always come and correct, get me out of trouble, and uh, they'll be there for you to offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off the Record app. Do it now and back to the show. Questions, so it was, uh, I, I knew that he would fit beautifully into the soup of yeah. the Bentley drive, and yeah. he did. And he, he said, I'll give, I'll give you money for this car right now. <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> like, I'll give you 35 yeah. for it. <laughs> um, so, you know, we went to see you uh, 2 at the Sphere. And so, you know, Christian... He's a hard person to bring to concerts. I was going to bring that up. That you've like this is why I did this. This is why I wanted you to come out. I brought you to three (laughs) concerts with me. And what have I done? And you've you've left early at two of them. (laughs) Yeah. And then one, you told me all the reasons you didn't like it. And and. And I, it's a man. When asked, it's, I tell you course, when asked. Course, I yes, never. But it's, it's written on your face and <laughs> yeah. body, my friend. You're really, you're a very hard person to bring to concerts. Yeah. In the same way you just, that you like, sit there like this, yeah. And I go, I go, what's going on? And you're like, do you really want to know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the same way as like, if you showed up with like, you know, a car that was like modified in a way that it was, was questionable. Yeah, like if you sh- even if you showed up in an awesome car right. that had 16-year-old tires on it, I would not be able to contain myself. Right. It's the same thing. And so for you to go to something 
before this weekend four times. It, there's no way that's not awesome. Right. And so even after when you went once and then you were like a week later, you're like, I'm going again. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's that good? Yeah, it's that good. So I, you know, I'm like a, a I guess I guess a casual like U2 fan. Like I like some of their songs. Sure. Like I'm not sure I would go to like a regular U2 concert if it was at the st- a football stadium or something. Like not sure I'd go. Um, but um, holy fucking shit. Yeah, that was that was really something. Yeah, no, it's a uh, it, it's a complete paradigm shift. Like that's the yeah, and and the reason I keep going back. So, one hundred percent gratitude to Julia, who has oh, what a lovely woman, Julia. lovely woman. She's my the best. She's my consigliere. I literally can't do anything session oriented without her at this point. And she is part of treatment, which is the team, uh, which is co headed by uh, Willie and Sam, who you met. Willie and Sam yes. is the other partner. And they oversee treatment, and treatment is one of the biggest, I think probably, I, I'm going to guess like top three production houses in the world. So the second time that I went to see the show, they also have Adele at the uh, Caesars, which is, they did that show, which mm. is incredible. They were also doing ACDC at Power Trip and doing oh, all I, their- Yeah, I was at that. All their visuals for yeah. ACDC, that was yeah. also a treatment. And then they were also loading in John Mayer at Madison Square Garden for his show. So they Ooh. do- the big stuff. Yeah. And Willie has been working with U2 since Unforgettable Fire. Yeah. So any production you've seen ever for U2 is his company. So this is both the band and Treatment's masterpiece. So so we, you know, because of Julia um, and and Christian's relationship, we got not just to see the show, but a distilled like idealized essence of the show. So everything from like we walked in the fucking staff entrance and skipped all the lines to like we got to see like the backstage and like the server room, which actually, as they typically are, is fairly disappointing to see. You know, it's it's like I'm expecting like an Ocean's Eleven server sure. room, you know, and it's just like a conference room like stacked with computers to the ceiling Whoa. and lots of fans. Yeah. P.S. <laughs> by also the other thing to understand is that when treatment showed up, the first thing that they said was your tech is inadequate. So that server room was they emptied a conference room and built their own server room and then built their own software to push. And I will Whoa. tell you right now, because I asked Julia exactly how big the data was is. It, I think, was it 1,700 petabytes? It is. is that uh, right? It's, uh, I'll tell you right now. The, the size of all of the projection, the, the visuals is uh, 1.7 petabytes. Now, I couldn't find how you convert that into a regular. petabyte is 1,024 terabytes. Right. And a terabyte is how many gigs? Uh, a thousand, I think. So this is an enormous. She said, she said the, 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 their, every song they push 400 terabytes of data to the screen. And there's... In a three and a half minute song. So, so a petabyte is 100,000 gigabytes. <laughs> so how many of it, was it? 1. 1.7 1. petabytes. Yeah. So that's... So basically 200,000 gigabytes, yeah. roughly. So, so I, and when I say the server room, I just mean because it's just a bunch of computers and dudes wearing black shirts and glasses. In and a it's fucking very room. hot. And it's mm-hmm. very hot. So like... But but it's also like when you consider like you know that we use the our our flash drives our terabyte flash drives are like half the size of an iPhone, and these these are fucking racks and racks and racks and racks of solid state drives. It's pretty crazy. And then the okay, so it's the graphics of the fucking screen, which is a how tall is it? Two hundred and something foot. Yeah, it's, it's like a two hundred foot tall curved 16k screen okay so you have graphics and visuals that are uh uh optimized for that but not fixed they're they're music responsive because according to julia the band doesn't play the songs actually exactly the same every time so the graphics have to adapt to the music like the song is a give or take. It's between three hundred and three minutes and thirty and three minutes and thirty three seconds. But still, there's like different pauses, right. different. So the, wow. the shit adapts to that. Then they're filming the band in sixteen k and projecting that on the not projecting, showing that on the screen. 
in, in bubbles in bubbles that, that move. move overlaid with the existing graphics with fucking no lag, no lag in real time. And in a couple of the scenes, there are the the band is hovering over digitized water and has real time reflections on the water. That's processed wow. in 16K in real time. Wow. In a, it in, was, a, in a program called Notch, which is the same one that does all that feedback and the crazy bits in um, Vertigo and oh, the, yeah. the, so the, cool. the helicopter lights. They're they're using digital. They're using visual feedback to affect the video in yeah. real time. That at the same time. So the the helicopter thing. I put I put a few. Um, go to the, go to my Instagram post. Some I didn't thumbnails. Put, I didn't put the helicopter because it was vertical and this was a horizontal post. But like if you scroll to the next thing, so uh, that's oh. uh, that's us. A uh, meet. So we got to the the thing that. So that's the the, the right, fucking. I'm dome. gonna say right now. I want to tell the Mike McCready from you my can. side before right. you tell it from I'm your side. I'm not going to get to that. But you do can. your bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. But um, <laughs> so we got to, because of Julia, we got to not just see the show, but see the show from the perfect position in the sphere to see each segment of the show. It's four acts. Yeah. So act one is like blow your fucking head off <laughs> to pieces. Yeah. And it was what was really interesting, and uh, you know, the very first as they first come on stage, ninety-seven percent of people in the fucking stadium have their phones out, and I am looking around and I say to Julia, "Doesn't this drive you nuts?" That that, and she goes, "Wait what? for the second song." She goes, "They're all going to do this, but wait for the second song." Wow. Okay. Really? okay. So everyone's filming the first song, the second song. The graphics go so batshit that it is impossible to to capture it, and almost every phone just goes drops go, their just goes away. They just they is surrender. That was that intentional? Yeah, was that yeah she called it. The... No, it's no, no, just no, that like, literally just... you, you, your brain is like, I don't know why I'm fucking even bothering. And on top of that, like I want to be immersed in yeah. this experience. This That's is cool. ru- this is ruining yeah. what I'm seeing. Yeah. And you then know? the third and fourth song are where. If you were to get motion sickness, that's where you would get it. That the third and fourth song are where like you don't even know where you are anymore. Yeah. Um, so when we start, time your drugs ju- accordingly. Yeah. When we uh, <laughs> when you when we start on the the Julia treatment, which yeah, is yeah. what you, the first thing we do is you're pretty much dead center. This week, this time we had to be off a little bit because they were filming with the with the big sky camera and all that. So we start on the floor, almost dead center, but we're behind a barricade so we don't have to deal with the general public. We're in like our own little area. But seeing in the, the photo, band. if you can see in the photo, if you're at the back of the floor, you're still like. I don't know, fifty feet yeah. from the stage. Like it's, it's like, it's close. Yeah. Everywhere in GA is close. And so um, you, we start there, and then we sort of move over for one, so that you can see. Because on one, when Bono is the conceit, is he gets everybody to pull up their phones to see the lights, and then they, pre- they, the video is also white orb lights. So the whole thing is like a three sixty uh, version. So we yeah. go over to that, so you can see those two things, and then. The first act ends, and then it goes to the quiet bit, which is when they do, you know, the um, like I've seen them do "Don't Dream It's Over." That's another. Like act like, one, three, and four are programmed four with the 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 graphics. Okay, but they would get bored if they played the same songs every night. So act two is like free form, whatever they feel like doing, but the screen is like just regular concert lights. It's just, because and it's also can't. just, it's like a projection of the members of the band and then each of them fall away until it ends up with just Bono and Edge for yeah, two yeah. songs, which is beautiful. Yeah, it's cool. And then act three is where it goes back to batshit. And then act four is a complete batshit. So act each four of them, is where you like cry. Yeah, it's where each of them builds and builds. So for Act Four, we get you get to we get to go up to where this perspective is, which is the this is video and lighting control, which is on Tier Two, and we're in our own little basically VIP area watching all of this from this perspective down. And we everyone just get to who's s- been says that Tier Two, where this is, is, is the, the best seats in the house. Yeah, the fucking high high seats are unfathomably high. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, you, it, when you're standing on the floor, if you turn around and look to the high seats, it doesn't look like, it looks like they've projected the high seats. They don't Ooh. look real. 
Like it's even taller than like stadiums. It's, oh yeah, it's crazy. And the, and the rake is crazy because it's it's set up also to do the, the the movie. So the other thing is that if you look at this picture for the Aronofsky film, they have to move this whole staging. Everything has to come out. So when they went to them and were like, "We're going to do this, but you guys have to be able to move your stage every week because they have to put the big smell cannons in because the movie is also haptic seats and smell a Roman business like five. D or whatever. So they had to also build this so it could move. So this isn't like even a permanent installation. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> like this stage has to disappear in order for this whole GA area to be empty so they can put 30 smell cannons in to that area. Yeah. And each of the songs is, well, two of them are a repeat. Uh, the flame flag and the smoke flag yeah. are the same guy. But each of the other songs are a different artist was commissioned to do different pieces. And this thing that you're looking at here is ILM, which is Industrial Light and Magic, George Lucas's company. It looks like as if you're looking just through, if, as if the wall of the sphere is gone, that's where you'd be facing otherwise. Straight into Vegas. Yeah. Folks, got to take one more quick break from the action to remind you that Road and Tracks 2 Experience Events for 2024 are now on sale. Registration is open for the Road and Tracks Smoky 600 in Tennessee and Kentucky, May 7th to 10th, and the Arizona Desert Run in the high deserts of the Southwest, November 12th to 15th of this year. Both events feature five-star hotels and food, route uh, created and led by me, time on the racetrack, and a whole lot more. So head over to experiences.roadandtrack.com and check out those events. They've got full itineraries and details. Uh, the Smoky 600 focuses on the Tale of the Dragon, the National Corvette Museum and Racetrack, and the very best of bourbon country. And the Arizona Desert Run features a beautiful high desert drive from Scottsdale to Sedona and uh, track time at the Radford Racing School, plus some of the best food in the Southwest. Head over to experiences.roadandtrack.com now and sign up to drive with me in 2024. And then there's a beautiful conceit, which we're not ruining because next week is the last week. This whole thing in time lapse completely uh, is deconstructed with cranes and everything, and then it returns back to the desert because there is actually, and the song after it is desert. Yeah, like it, there's actually a sequence. There's an, to well, it's them. actually an arc. The whole yeah, thing yeah, is yeah. a story. Makes like sense. it start. Like there's this. I sent it to Matt. There's it turns this, into the desert, and then the desert floods, and then it's like at this underwater kind of and thing. And then the time wheel. Yeah, and it's then this real thing. crazy. And so the, and the, the city deconstructing was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, over the course of the song, going from like. City like to back to earth, it was crazy. and it's like cranes, it's not like it goes down, it's like literally looks like it's being deconstructed. Like there's cranes swinging so and caterpillar tractors. Uh, um, time lapse from when it was assembled and they run reverse, or do you think it's all like they created the graphic? They created it's no, all, it's all that's it's, not a real video, it's all CGI. Okay, there's not one there's piece not one. of real okay, video wow. in the yeah. entire show, it's all the yeah. CGI smoke, the CGI fire, all of the water is CGI. I mean, it, it's it's an enormous, enormous visual yeah. achievement, it's and really, really and cool. Willie wow. and his team, you know, it's like, you know, people are like, why do you keep going back? And I'm like, well, A, I get to do that for free five times, which is crazy, but then also it's changed. Like, the, la the first time I went was show three, and I was lucky enough to be able to go and live in the crew housing with Willie, who's the designer and his assistant, and a couple of other people, including Julia, and we sat there, and the, the tradition after the show is we have a cheese plate, and some tea at one o'clock in the morning, because nice. English people will drink caffeinated tea and still be out of sleep, <laughs> which I couldn't understand. And you sat there, and Willie had his notebook out, and he just said, uh, he was like, uh, vertigo is just not right. And then the next time I came and saw it, vertigo was helicopters and these live videos that are, Bono is like, what, a hundred feet it's, tall? <laughs> so it's like, once this goes to the desert, these helicopters start flying around, and shine down a spotlight, which is familiar to anybody in Los Angeles. <laughs> right. The f and, and in the spotlights appear live video. live video of the band members 150 feet tall. Playing with vi video feedback and all these unbelievable it's images. insane. So that was the punch up for the second time it's I saw it. It's not on my Instagram, but I do have a photo of it. I'll show you. It's crazy. And then the third time I went, the disco ball showed up for the first time, yeah. which I hadn't seen prior. 
And then the fourth time they had, he had uh, just subtly changed other stuff that people hadn't seen with the, uh, when the fireflies are all buzzing around. Yeah. So each time I've gone, I've also seen the show change. And also I've seen that act two change. Cause I went, when they did uh, before Christmas, they did, um, fairy tale in New York for Shane McGowan who passed away. And then afterwards they did don't dream it's over from crowded house. So they have leeway in that second act. Cause it's just the band playing without visuals attached to it to do whatever they want and stretch it out. And it's really beautiful. So going back each time and seeing the show also, Evolve has a, been a beautiful experience. And then as Matt saw, what's, you know, felt what's, I think the most profound part of it is that because of the fact that, that, you know, Julia had got the treatment team addicted to my Instagram feed over quarantine because they were still working and they were in England. So they were all listening to the sessions while they were working on this project. So they already knew me before I showed up. So it was like this, I got to be part of this family, but then you meet these people. And now when you meet Willie, you're now in, like emotionally invested in yeah. how amazing this show was because you're like, oh, I now know the people who are working at a level of excellence that's so crazy, you know, and this this band is so profoundly unique. Like I was telling them, the, the, the sound guy who they seen was like, he looks like Santa Claus. He, he looks like big, Confucius. He's like, a, looks, yeah, he's like an yeah. <laughs> Irish Santa Confucius guy. Yeah. Joe Hurley he is the uh, is the the sound guy. He was the sound guy at the first gig in the first pub that you two played in Dublin. Get out of here. Yeah. And when they walked in, he was like, look at these long-haired whatevers who are going to do what? And then Edge pulled his guitar pedals out, and in his brain, he's like, it's like Hendrix didn't need any guitar pedals. After the first gig, he walked up to them and said, I'm going to be your sound guy for the rest of your lives. And he is mixing the sphere what? after doing Live Aid, after doing the Joshua Tree tour, unforget every tour they've ever played. Remember we saw Bob Geldof in we the VIP? We saw Bob Geldof in the VIP, I which was kind of crazy. <laughs> so when Joe's wife was pregnant, they had a private jet waiting at every airport so that if she went into labor, he was straight on the plane and straight back to Dublin because they're all based out of Ireland, except, you know, the band has houses all over, but the crew and everybody are pretty much exclusively based in Dublin. So... This dude who's sitting, and I watched, I went to this, I got to go to the sound booth and, and watch a couple songs last time, and he's still dicking around, you know, he's yeah. like still, it's not like autopilot, he's right. like, man, I'm just going to tweak, and then, you know, the, the to go back to the technical, there's like 160,000, 163,000 speakers in the venue. What? Yeah, it's, cra it's crazy. So the sound doesn't doesn't emanate from the stage it emanates from this wall of visual so the so the, the, the people are like well why is it going to be fucking you too it's the perfect band because the edges guitar is just this ephemeral thing that floats through the air and there was stuff that i i mean i know what good is and i know what great is but i don't really know beyond that but because christian was there to point shit out mm -hmm. i was like oh when he was like, when U2's voice, when uh, Bono's voice was coming straight at me and the Edge's harmony were coming down from above, I was like, oh, that's yeah. fucking kind of crazy, actually. Like, like Joe separates it out. That, that theater is built in, so that, that PA is built in such a way that when they do movie screenings, they can literally take one section of the theater and have the movie in French. And the next row over will be English. What? Mm -hmm. And then the Whoa. next row over can be Spanish, and the next row over can be Swahili, and they can divide the theater, and there's no crossfade. So seat seven and seat eight are getting two different versions. And when I went there for the like the third time I went, we actually spent some time at the sound booth, which was what they. So they turned on all the power, so you could see where all the speakers were, and the speakers are constantly talking to each other to make sure that they're doing the job the right way. And right, they, twice in the show, right at the beginning of the day, they spend they send this ultrasonic pop through that you can't hear that locks everything in. Then they go it's like through a it, slate, and then yeah, exactly like a sonic slate. And then right before the band starts, there's a dead moment, and they hit it again to make sure that all the speakers are locked in to do the fucking best job that they can do for the next two hours. That's incredible. Yeah, it's really, Humans really are amazing. It's, it's really batshit. And like. You know, before we went, the day before we drove out there, Zach and I had a meeting in this room with the Apple CarPlay team, or two two representatives. I'm sure there's a thousand people who work on it. And we're not allowed to say exactly what they showed us, which we promised to do, and I won't do, because we're nice people. But just, <laughs> I don't think they had a good time. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not going to be number one on the I, I list of places to go back to. For no, it's not that. And I, th- I hope, and I hope that they continue to share their views and allow us to share ours. And just based on publicly available, what they showed, like I don't know, CES or wherever it was last year, the future of the conceptual dashboard. Did you, did you remember that picture? Yeah, yeah. Where the whole fucking dash yeah, was it's a, just screen. a big screen. Boo. And and. You know, I said to them, you know, do you guys ever, does anyone ever say this is, this is too much screen? Right. Anyone ever say this is too much for a fucking car? Does anyone ever say that? There it is. This is a publicly, does anyone ever go, all of that information coming at you while you're supposed to be driving is too goddamn much. Right. Because they're basically going to be integrating CarPlay further into cars than ever before. And that I don't think that violates anything they told me. That's pretty much a given. And Apple widgets, and you can customize shit, and, and all kinds of stuff that will objectively make CarPlay work better, right? And given the choice between a CarPlay dash and whatever the fuck BMW is doing down there with that M4, M3, I'll take CarPlay every time. But... But it did not make me feel – it made me feel like tech is taking advantage of us mm. and not actually improving shit, particularly when we drove this this beautiful Bentley, this wood, Analog metal. Everywhere. <laughs> All I had, I had a, a small little screen, my phone, right. with a fucking GPS on it yep. and an ability to put music from my phone to the speakers, and that was really enough for me. Yeah. But, like, it made me so, it made me so down on – your whole dashboard needs to be screened, especially when I did the same drive in the G-Wagon last fucking week, and I spent 35 minutes trying to figure out how to dim the panels enough because they were glowing right. in my face. It's dark outside. I can't see. But then we got to the sphere, and I'm watching this, and I go, it actually made me go, oh, this is what tech is for. <laughs> right. It's for this. Right, to enhance things that have already... It's, it's to, it, yeah, it's to, it's to take... A, a, a very talented band and turn music played on instruments into a, such an immersive experience, you know, that it is that it, that is mind blowing and irreplicable outside of that. Yeah, that was it's like the flip side. I felt totally different about technology right. after seeing that show versus having a conversation with people who are pro your car being made of screens. Right. Yeah, I think the question for non-car people I'd like to ask is, and I know they're not listening to the show, but do they, do all these extra screens improve their lives? Because the visuals at the show, at the Sphere, like improve your experience yeah, of musical for art, sure. right? And it's done at a level that's never been done before, But and that's how everything iterates and, and everything evolves. But with the screens in the cars, I feel like we're being shown these things because they can be done. I know he's and, asking for it. Well, it. Yeah, and then people go, oh, I guess, well, this right. is good. I guess this is good. Sure. But I wonder if normal consumers like having more and more information, more and more screens, more and more, et cetera. I mean, I consider myself probably closer to the regular consumer than to a car person, and I would say absolutely not. Like a screen, is, yeah, a is screen good. is great. A screen is great. You know, like good. the mini that I drive has. Yeah. I even have like the one before they put the digital dashboard bits on it. Yeah. So I have like the analog, and then there's like the center thing that used to be the yeah. speedometer. That's now it's a screen. That's a screen, and it's great. That's yeah. all I need. I don't need all of this other bullshit. Yeah. But I think, I mean, isn't isn't the eventual goal, in quotes, to get to self-driving where these screens will actually be things that people Cart would... Cart before the horse, bro. Of course, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I know it's, the, the it's a stupid way to go about it, but it seems to me like that's what they're yeah. doing, is they're setting it up that, like, eventually that'll be showing Netflix and blah, 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 because you'll just But be... I think right now it's it's the illusion of improvement. I think it's, sure, like, that it's that like, makes like sense we have too. this tech, we can put it in there, and right. it's a way to make a car seem new. Yeah. First, like, they have to convince you to buy a car that's new instead right. of one from three years ago. Side effect, it's way cheaper to make. It's also cheaper to make. <laughs> Side I mean, true, that's, true. It's way that's cheaper to build right. yeah. a screen gauge cluster than, than it is to build cluster. actual analog gauges. Right. Yeah. And then also, you know, the human need 
certainly I think that has has grown as well, which is the the ability to customize not necessarily where gauges and things are, but mine's blue yeah. Yeah, yeah. and mine's you know yeah. fucking My Little Pony and you know my yeah. favorite fucking K-pop star. So you get to do that, which I think is probably where the general public gets all woo. Well, LEDs made that possible because now you can rent a Mustang, thirty five thousand dollar Mustang, and it will have. What twelve different colors yeah, that you can make right. the Glowing. interior? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then if you're in a Mercedes or a more expensive car, you can change so many oh, different the colors. The Mercedes EQ is like a full on disco. Yeah, yeah I saw so, this chick in my one? yeah my this chick in my building just got it in hers the other day, and I was like, it, as it powered up, I was like, what the <laughs> fuck yeah. is going That's on? That's the in sphere there? of cars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and yep. fucking Will I Am is doing some weird right, shit with course, the speakers, like you is. know, uh, bless his fake car company heart. Um, uh, so. Before we go on, no, no, the Mike McCready okay, part so of this adventure. The, the P.S. of this, uh, we're walking from the hotel to the Sphere. In the lobby of the Palazzo, I, it's like, I'm or the, the lobby, the casino. I He's about eight feet from me. I spot Mike McCready, the lead guitarist for Pearl Jam. I have been to 63 Pearl Jam shows. And I have never met a member of the band. This surprises people that it I've never does. met the mem a member of Pearl Jam. Yeah. But I haven't. So I see Mike McCready, uh, and I were he's with his family, and I'm walking, and I just I I'm pretty stunned. I just go Mike McCready, <laughs> and he looks up and he goes, "What's up, bro?" And I just go, "Big fan, dude." But I kept it moving. I didn't even stop. Kept it moving, and I was like, "I cannot." And Hannah's like, "What are you doing? Go back." But he but I'm like. He's, right. with, he's with his family. Yeah, that's my entry, yeah. He's with his yeah, family. Oh, he's, cool. he's They've got their luggage. He's like going to the elevator. I'm like, I'm like, this is- Leave my I'm, man be. Leave my man, exactly. Yep. Leave, but I go, I go, he's probably going to the show. Right. So the whole fucking night, I am, I assume he's in a super VVIP area, but we were in a pretty VIP and area. We were in the most VIP. Bob Geldof we're was in, 30 feet when from When Bob us. Geldof shows up, I'm like, I'm like, this is where McCready would be. Right. I'm, so I'm was... fucking head on a swivel looking for McCready. So funny. And there were. So, Christian's like, so the sphere, and you're like, yeah, 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 where's the. Well, so guy? we're checking in because we get there. And, and then we all sort of go our separate ways so that they can go to the hotel and freshen up before they come into the show. So me and my buddy Adam go for a walk and I'm walking down the the strip and I get a text from Hannah that's like, Matt's losing his fucking mind. He just saw Mike McCready in the lobby of the hotel. And I'm like, of course he did. It's fucking amazing. So then we go into the show and we end up going into the VIP area, the, the little um, sort of, it's a bar and there's some food and blah, blah, blah. And... I introduced, and Matt gets introduced to uh, Mark Pellington, who oh, is yeah. the dude that did the Jeremy he video, directed who's the a Jeremy huge video. director, who I know he was from very nice. previous works, and he's working with you two on film stuff with them. So there's like a Pearl Jam thing. So Matt's yeah. now in like Pearl Jam heaven. Yeah. Like this is, I like, guess, the, the universe has proven that he's supposed to be there. Then we see Bob Geldof, and there's a lead singer, Muse, and like everyone's in the room and hanging out. So then we go to the show. Oh, was that who that was? Yeah, Matt. In the fucking hat. Yeah, that Matt, was Matt, Matt Bellamy, Bellamy, right? Yeah, yeah. In the rock star hat. Yeah, so Matt Bellamy yes. from Muse okay. is there, yeah, and yeah. you know, so Muse could probably pull off that venue. <laughs> One the thousand. Yeah. I was like, I just want to be in Matt Bellamy's brain yeah, sitting there yeah, having him be like, yeah. okie dokie. I'd go see Muse. Yeah, then. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, he, uh, so we're so we're hanging out, and then we go and we watch the show and, and the whole thing, and it's beautiful, and then uh, Matt gets Willie to sign the, the set list, and it's... Yeah, wait, just uh, go back a little bit, because my favorite, my favorite, so... I, so here's this photo. So in the beginning, I'm super annoyed with everybody on their phones, right? <laughs> I'm like, fucking experience this. A couple songs in, I take a couple of pictures. <laughs> okay? Oh, we've been looking at them. I take a couple of pictures, and especially, and then, and then, and I'm, and I'm like, you know what? I, I think, I, I think I, I understand why everybody wants to take pictures of this. It's fucking crazy, like, and people won't believe what you've seen when you go home. And then when we get up to the lighting booth, I take a couple more pictures because I'm like, want to tell people that I was in the fucking lighting booth, and that's cool. And then at the end, <laughs> this is the last uh, song of the show. This Beautiful photo day. is Willie Williams, who created the goddamn show and has seen it every week for four months. And worked on it for three years. And worked years. on it for three yeah. years, videoing it on his <laughs> own fucking phone. That's so funny. And I was like, once I saw Willie doing it, yeah. I was like, all right, everybody take your fucking phones yeah, yeah. out, video this shit. So last night, Julie- they, And they gave me a set list, and and Willie was very nice and signed the set list to, to me and Hannah. Yeah. I've already ordered the frame. It's very, very kind of him. 
Um, and he, here's the thing. He said to me, he said, I, when I asked him to sign it, he said, I never do this. Do you think that means he's not really asked because yeah. he's not a public figure yeah, or that asked. he's asked and he's never asked? I mean, when he's sitting in that yeah. lineup, yeah, yeah. he's actually the dude with the least amount of shit in front of him. Yeah, and he's you just got a, two he's guys just a with guy. These, yeah, you got these two guys <laughs> with these massive boards. Yeah. Then you got Matisse next to him. So the, the video component is run by two guys uh, primarily, and one of them is Smasher and the other one's Matisse, and they're a father and son team. So it's fucking so cool to see these guys working together. But all that's in front of Willie is a laptop. And my favorite part of the of watching Willie is that he'll watch the entire show and then he puts his little pince nez glasses on and then he lifts slowly his laptop and then the red note goes into the laptop and then it gets closed and that's going to be brought up later. Julia sent me a picture with the, with said he's only got two shows left and he's still taking notes and sure enough last night because they're closing Friday and Saturday of next week he's still refining this fucking show yeah. wow. today. That's awesome. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's the math. So that, this is my favorite picture picture of the night is the guy who made the thing videoing Video his own yeah, shit. Yeah, just to, I was like, everyone else have at it. Pull just your fucking have, phones out. Have record. He's, yeah, yeah. he's truly, I mean, this is, um, it's beyond. And the yeah. thing, you know, like, so I sent Matt the picture. Anyone who's been to see this, first off, fuck everyone in the comments who's like, fucking YouTube. Blah, blah. The I don't like you two that much. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It doesn't, re it doesn't matter. Like, they and the point is, clearly put on an amazing show, but it's not even about you two. Who no. gives a shit? It's like just seeing what this thing can do, and you need a big band to do it. Well, I think that there is also something, you know, incredibly special about you two if you know how they function as an organization and the, you know, how, I mean, they're a deeply spiritual band, and they're all Catholic, and it's a big part of what they. And I sent Matt the picture. So when the when the, if you've seen the show and you know how it opens with the and it all splits apart, that is actually in reference to a church from Japan. So the whole thing starts from the beginning to the end, and it has this beautiful spirituality to it. And the moment that everybody cries <laughs> is when the guitar chimes from Streets Have No Name happen at the beginning of the last three songs. I get goosebumps to talk about it. it is, if you are not moved by the experience of watching them play that song, yeah. you've got something broken inside of you that you should <laughs> go and talk to somebody about. Yeah. Because it's the feeling of 20,000 people lose the roar that comes out of the crowd, and it's literally Edge just standing there going, bling, dong, 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 and just yeah. goes, Rah! and then it doesn't stop for three songs, because then it goes from that into With or Without You into Beautiful Day, which is the final song. And the reason that you 2 had to be the first band to go in there is they're one of the only bands in the world that could put 20,000 people into a room three nights a week for almost six months mm -hmm. and secondly they're the ones that needed to sanctify the ground so that other people can come in there and do their thing in a place that has now the the, the it's been broken open mm -hmm. and no other band if any other band had gone in there and done it it would have just been a show you two going there yeah. and doing it is a spiritual it, event. They, yeah. they seem to do things with intention. Yeah. Yeah. Every I think moment the, yeah. is intended. Well, I think, but the band, and I'm yeah, not a huge 100%. fan of theirs either, yeah, but yeah. I know that they're a band of, of integrity. So if they're going to do this, it says something about what is being made. The venue is, it. is actually too good for a lot of bands. Yeah. Like a lot of bands don't have the capacity, even if they're good at music, to take advantage of what this can do. But like, I was like, like Muse could do it. Uh, Taylor Swift could do it. Beyonce could uh, do Beyonce it. Beyonce could do it. Uh, Metallica could, do could it. probably do yep. it. Nine Inch um, Nails would murder Nine in this place. Yeah. But like, you have to be a band that has gotten to the end of what regular level production right. can You've do. You've done it all. Like, you yeah. have to have done a football stadium in the round and killed it right. multiple, multiple times. Yep. And the Coldplay could probably yep. do it, actually. Coldplay absolutely could do it. Um, but, but, like, but you also need a front man who can hang that whole place yeah, on yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Bono, like it or not... Yeah, he can do that. Can, yeah. he, when there's a 120-foot-tall version of Bono and then there's a little Bono, you're <laughs> like, that's the same thing. Yeah, 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 That's a projection of this dude into this room. Yeah. It's not a video of a guy. It's like he's been extrapolated out to the most Bono that Bono can be. I mean, I was telling them, they've had the same on-the-road chaplain with them for 35 years. 
And he passed away a few years back, and it was a, that's a huge, gig. That's a good gig. It's a great gig. But his job is he's not only does he they bless the show before every single time, but he's on the road as the on the road therapist basically. And if anyone in the band or anyone in the crew or anyone is suffering, they go and talk with him. And he's known that when the the guy who passed away, unfortunately, had known them. It's the the crew is built up of this, the same dude that is wrangling. He doesn't have a mic cord anymore, but is wrangling Bono's experience is if you go back and watch the U2 Live Aid, it's the same dude that's wrangling the mic cable yeah. at Live Aid. The guitar tech is the same dude that's been with them for 30, 40 years. Every, and they're, every, well, they're cousins and uncles. The whole crew is all built of the fan. It's a whole familial unit. So you also have this experience of, like, you're backstage. Everybody knows each other. Yeah, a lot of Irish people back So there. many a Irish of, people. A lot of Irish going on And right they've there. all been with them for yeah. decades, which is unlike so many other bands that you experience. So it really is this feeling of, like, of an entire family, down to the people that present the visuals, which is unheard of. These guys haven't been with with you with John Mayer for forty years. Yeah, yeah. So that's you amazing. have this. Every, cool. What you mean with intention is like everybody there is working with intention, and it's excellence all the way around. And it, it's it was a, such a you know part of me going back so many times is each time I've gone, I've been able to take other people. And Julie and I were talking about like how much fun it is to derive the joy from watching your friends lose their fucking minds. Like, when the thing opens, I'm not looking at the thing opening right, anymore because right. I know I'm looking at these guys all like, yeah, what the fuck? And then I'm like, and then we're going to go upstairs, and then you go upstairs, and they get to have that version of the show where you're sitting. I mean, that's the, the, the only house, the only seat that's better than that is Joe's position, which is the sound desk, which is almost directly in front of the stage. So that's the I mean, only seats yeah. that are better than that place to yeah. hang out and have a free water, take a there's seat. The yeah, there's the wide for yeah. the, uh, that's the Streets Have No Name set, which is just. So that smoke is not film. That's all CGI. Wow. Yeah. It's and it's amazing. It's incredible. And Let's, you know, uh, yeah, well, I'm so, just going to break but, up with so, Sarah. <laughs> so tell us. Uh, Oh, so, yeah. So, so the tell, your, the, yeah, tell your yeah, yeah, version yeah. So of this the, so we can move on to our main so topic the, today. So the beautiful, uh, the book ending of the entire thing is, so we leave and we're going out through the servant's entrance at the back so we don't have to deal with the hoi polloi. So we go out through the back and Julia's been at this place a million fucking times, right? So they're staying at the Palazzo, which is sort of behind the sphere over by the uh, Venetian, which is directly connected by a, by a bridge to the venue. So Matt, and I, this is how well I know Matt Farah. So they, so Julie is like, all right, if you guys go here and take a left and just walk all the way around, then you'll get to the bridge and you'll be fine. And Matt's like, yeah, but if we go to the right, I think it's shorter. And Julie is like, mm, no, it's actually shorter to go up that way. So he's like, okay. And I can see in Matt Farah's brain. I know exactly what Matt Farah's thinking. And he walks away. And the first thing I do is I see him get his phone. I'm like, this motherfucker is now map questing to see which is the faster route. Yo, my so directional <laughs> awareness. It's very so, good. I, very one fucking hot, nobody's good, denying that. By the way, so they, so they keep walking, and I can see that there's you know like he's trying to they, which way they're going to go. So we go about our business. We're in the van, and we're driving. And then suddenly my phone lights up, and it's the photo of Matt with this white-haired gentleman pointing at his Pearl Jam <laughs> tattoo. And I write back, is that Mike motherfucking McCready? <laughs> and Heather, Hannah returns the text that says. Yeah, we're walking down, and Matt was like, I really think it's shorter to go the other way. And she said, we're going to fucking listen to Julia, and we're going to go to the left. And we turned to the left, and then Mike McCready appeared like an angel oh out of heaven. <laughs> and Matt is now losing his mind. Yeah. So the whole thing was benchmarked, yes. I mean, bookended beautifully by this <laughs> Mike McCready <laughs> seating at the, siding at the beginning, and then actually meeting him and having him point at the tattoo. And none of that would have happened if Matthew... If I on his way. If I did not listen to Julia. The irony, because this is a, if ever there was a, this it's about the journey, not the destination. Yeah, yeah. It's right now. It's, yeah. And you're right. like, I got this old Bentley, and it's it's not as fast as a new thing, but yeah. there's so many things. Yeah. And yet, when, and yeah. then, and, and he, he was did. very cool. He chatted with me for a few minutes. It was, it and then was, tell it the thing that his daughter said. Oh, you know, I said to him, like, I, he was with his daughter, who was like, I don't know, teenager. And, uh, and I said, you know, I've been to 63 shows, and it, and his daughter was like, huh, I've been to 64. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, he was he was very cool. He appreciated the tattoo. He said that this was the best concert he's ever seen. Yeah. Jesus. And I think he's been to a lot of concerts. Yeah. 
I mean, it and, is. It's the it's an absolute paradigm shift. There's no way around it. Period. Yeah. And I, I said, do you you know do you think you guys could pull this one off? And he goes, that would be a challenge. Yeah. Because Pearl Jam doesn't do graphics and stuff. They have very traditional live show. Uh, um, I mean, well, the reason you know the 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 reason that U two has the the second act where they don't have to yeah, work yeah. to a click is so that they don't have to be locked into this dunk dunk yeah. dunk dunk time code thing that is running all of the other visuals. But so wow. in closing, thank you so much to Julia yeah, for repeatedly amazing. taking me back there, and thank <laughs> you for allowing Matt and Hannah and Adam to come out there for a glorious weekend yeah. this last weekend and sending me the longer Mike McCready way home. The, the <laughs> I fucking, and you know, after Willie signed the thing with a Sharpie up there, for like a half a second, I was like, pocket the Sharpie, but then Just I did Then I threw it back on the desk, and then I saw a fucking McCready, and I didn't have a Sharpie. If I had, I would have had him sign my tattoo and gone straight, straight to, to the tattoo fucking parlor. tattoo parlor. Oh, yeah. yep. And I literally, I'm around, and I, I literally, does anybody have a fucking <laughs> Sharpie? And nobody did. Everyone thought I was insane. <laughs> um, but, uh, God, me, meeting Mike McCready at the end was a, that yeah, was a, that's a perfect, that's weekend. a cap off. Yeah. It's, it's a cap off. Yep. Let me tell you about the burrito I had when we were moving. <laughs> okay. Clapman missed <laughs> Friday thing. evening. We got a lot of boxes packed. <laughs> nice. Well, congratulations. Was, no. I, I was texting so. Christian because he was very nice to invite me. It was so funny how quickly the option was dismissed by my lady because she's right. I was like, you know, Christian hit me up and he's like, he's got a spot for this thing. And she was like, oh, well, that'd be fun. It was something, it was something like that was like, there's no way. You're right. Leaving. There's no wiggle room at all in oh. this. Yeah. Yeah. When I say the reprieve yeah. was not approved. Yeah. yeah. It, okay. was, uh, it was a superior experience. Um, uh, and yeah, Julia's, Julia's a, a serious champ. Mm -hmm. Champ. She's a real she's fucking She's the one champ. with the curly hair? Yeah. 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 She's, all, yeah. she's, she's the one who, so who nice works at, at all Christian shows, I've shows been to. too. Yeah. 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 Runs the show. At it this was point. ridiculous. Yep. Um, all of it. So, um, anyway, let's, let's, uh, let's move on to today's, we actually have a topic today. We've <laughs> done an hour of radio before we get to it, but that's what happens when Christians are here. A lot to talk about about this, this sphere. So, uh, today it's GT cars since we have just done a grand tour mm -hmm. i don't know can you consider a grand tour uh, an out and back or does it have to be sort of a multi-stop uh i think that is vegas and back grand tour uh worthy i think a vehicle that's suited for grand touring would work for that drive yeah i don't know if that drive itself constitutes yeah, as one if that's just a long drive i think that's just a long drive. yeah yeah but yeah but it's the one we've got it's a very frequent <laughs> right i gotta i gotta do that drive Three times in six weeks, and it for, is a, it is a test of a vehicle because not only is it the drive, it's what it feels like to do the drive because that yeah. road sucks. That and road if you're sucks. in a shitty car, that's going to only make the journey worse. Yeah, and Vegas is supposed to be glamorous, at least yep. in theory. In theory, and uh, and so you, you want a good car for that. Yep, for sure. So our top five GT cars of all time, any period, any car is an open uh, open season. You want to start it off, or what? Do you well, have a list? Yeah, I have my list from TeamBPH.com. So that's someone prove else's that, list. That this, this person doesn't know what they're talking about. Oh, that was okay. why I wanted to see. All right. If well, this then that dude then you go. On. Then you go last. Okay. Well, Zach and yep. I will go first, and you go last. For me, uh, and this is in not not in order. No of, order. Not, it's not in order. Okay. I, 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 it's in the order of that I thought of them in. Um, the number one I thought of, 1959 to 62, Bentley Continental S2, uh, two door. Coupe, 200 horsepower V8, uh, 1959 Bentley Continental S2, and add Coupe to uh, to that. Uh, this is, Ooh, yeah, there you go, the, yeah. the silver one on the left, uh, that'll do it. Or the one from Hemmings there on the images, that'll do it. Yep, came in a two and a four-door. The two-door <sighs> is really the one that I'm talking about. Yeah, two-door is the mood. Yeah, That's V8, uh, V8 power. 200 horsepower, but that was a decent amount for 59. Four-speed automatic gearbox. You'll note that that's one more gear that my yeah, 1991 yeah, yeah. Bentley yeah, has. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, sidebar on the gearbox. A lot of people sent me the gear vendor's overdrive system that can be attached to my three-speed automatic gearbox. It's a GM thing. I appreciate the thought, but the parts, the labor, you'd have to make a drive shaft. You'd be engineering this whole thing. You're probably six thousand dollars in, 
And for what? To get three miles per gallon better on the highway? The juice is not worth the squeeze. The juice is not worth the squeeze. Not to mention, it doesn't turn a three-speed into a true four-speed. You have to manually engage that overdrive, right. which is like a pro-touring muscle car experience, yep. not a Bentleying experience. So thank you for your thoughts, but pfft, no. But, uh, but Donnie no. does have a guy. <laughs> if you really want to do it, you have to put in a transmission from a later Bentley, also not worth it. Unnecessary. Speed. So anyway, <clears throat> Bentley Continental S2. Great choice. Uh, the drop head coupe, mm. actually. This is not a drop head. There's one that the, the, what they call the drop head. What that actually means is the grill is actually lower. So it's got a, a slightly more aerodynamic grill, which is not the one that we are showing. Uh, the go, green one? The one on the left. Uh, that one has the drop head grill. See how it's a little, uh, yeah. a little lower, a little more aerodynamic. It's not. It's, it's a not subtle. As it's a subtle thing, but I like that. Um, these cars ten years ago were worth like eighty grand. They're now worth Ooh. half a million bucks. Wow. Uh, they only made one hundred and twenty-five of the drop heads, alloy body, um, very fucking hot, and uh, I would love to take a long drive in that. Yeah. No notes. Zach, what do you got? <laughs> uh, I love that term. I know it's very popular. So I'm going to go, speaking of drop heads. Ah, oh, yes. Now, it is very rare that I like a convertible over a coupe. Very rare. But yeah. the Phantom. Phantom drop hard, head. Hard, yeah. hard top yeah. is a four-door. So Phantom drop head, V12, 400-ish, 35 horsepower. Yes. I mean, what cruises better? Like, we drove one of these to Mojave, I think, for a mm -hmm. shoot back in the day for car show, and I understood what yachting meant. Like, and I've never oh, yachted, yeah. yes. but I remember accelerating from, like, 60 to 120, and it just sits back, and it's silent, and it's quiet, even though it's a soft top, and I went, oh, mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So I've actually got the Rolls Phantom Coupe on my list. You've got the drop head, which is the convertible. You know, because if I'm doing a really long yeah. tour, I may want to put the top down to smell the smells or I'm see with the things you. or have a little sun. I'm with yeah. you, but the coupe is even more elegant. It is a two-door car that is as long as a Suburban. Uh, wow. It, 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 the fan, and not, not, this, is, this is technically called, this is called a Phantom drop head. The Phantom <laughs> coupe, two-door coupe, love it. Very rare. That's on my list, too. Zach, what else you got? And I will say the suicide doors are just exceptional. Well, suicide door coupe. Fuck. Murder. That's yes. the way to do it. Uh, it's yes, just sir. so yeah. pimp. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, well, hold on. Uh, oh, let me yeah. just give you a, a – I went to teambhp.com's uh, website and asked what they considered the best uh, GTs. The definition of uh, Grand Tour Italian Gran Turismo is a performance and luxury automobile capable of high speed and spirited long distance driving. The most common format is two-door coupe with either two-seat or two-plus-two arrangement. Their first list, the yeah. first on the list, is the 1962 Ferrari 250 GTO, which immediately was met with a resounding WTF for the other two. <laughs> it's a race car. That's a race car. That is a race and car. It is, that is a preposterous choice to make yeah. because the racket alone would yes. stop you from wanting to go long distances. I yeah. omitted... A Corvette, for example, because it's a Cause, sports car. Right, yeah, right. That right. is a yeah. race car. If, you, if the top of the list was the Ferrari uh, 250 GT, which is the street version sure. of that, I could hear that argument for yeah. sure. But the this GTO is, yeah, full has on. no sound insulation whatsoever, no climate control. It is. Uh, it is not. It's amazing car. Right. Not. Not, not what. Not I'm even doing. close. Yeah, so yeah. BHP's first choice gets no. the gas face. Okay. What about their second choice? The second choice is a 1961 Jaguar E Type. Sports car, I think, more yeah. than GT car. I would have said the same. Uh, although, if you got the, if you got the, um, the coupe, a little better. Okay. A little more refined, uh, less wind noise. You could probably sustain higher speeds. Better. It's not totally out of the question, but and it is front engine, rear drive. Yep. It's long and narrow, very pretty. Very pretty. It made our list of best British roadsters, but it wouldn't make my top choice of uh, of GT car. Well, there you go, Zach. What do you have uh, for your next? Um, I mean, you've heard this before: Ferrari 550 Marinello uh -huh. manual. And the reason I didn't choose. Uh, the 575 is because I think those are too rare and too expensive, and that curtails driving at some times. We go, ooh, I don't want to drive it too far. Good it's point. fragile. This is, looks expensive. It has the same shape. It's softer. The suspension's softer than the 575, which actually, which actually would ride better over long distances. I feel so. you, but I did put the 575 on my list. 575 manual. Uh, essentially the same car. Yep. Variants of the same car. 
uh, no disagreements, classic, looks great on the road, comfortable to drive, mm -hmm. sounds good, holds your shit, very dependable yeah. uh, car by Ferrari standards. Okay, now we get into the weird one. How about a 1988 Aston Martin V8 Vantage X-Pack? Do you know what that Oof, is? No, I can't the, wait to see what the, the X in The V8 Vantage X-Pack. This is sort of the end <clears throat> of this era of Aston Martin uh, Vantages that started in 1973. The X-Pack is a special power kit that Aston was doing. It was higher compression, more aggressive cams, and they took off the fuel injection and they went with Weber carburetors. 432 horsepower. Oh, good Lord, yes. I mean... It's exceptional. Exceptional. It's exceptional. Right? Exceptional. It's one of my favorite designs of a yeah. car ever, ever. I agree. Yeah. Five-speed manual, gearbox, the wheel choice, the the front air dam, yeah. the fog lights the in fog the fog lights are just... Perfect. Perfect. I mean, you 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 get in one of these. I mean, look. You, can we go to that profile uh, yeah, shot, please, side Zach? Profile. I mean, that side profile. This is a car that you get in in London and you drive straight to Monaco. Right. That's what that's what that shit is, right? Uh, there. Is there a specific designer that did this, or is that just a, a I don't know standard who did the aesthetic. Uh, I, I do I mean, not know who tremendous. did who designed the aesthetic, but but I think that is the best of the Vantage range, yep. which makes it the best. Uh, Aston Martin GT car of all time. What are those going for, roughly? Do you know? Fucking X Pack. Yeah. Three fifty, four hundred grams. That uh, did this sell? When was this? Estimate two seventy to three forty. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what it act. Oof. Is this a current one? Is this is this a current uh, sale? Well, the bond. Uh, oh, oh, this is December twenty eighteen. So it probably doesn't more. actually sell sell what. See so what it's it probably for. more for it's now. Probably more, and now. that's pounds. Yeah. by the way, that's that is pounds. pounds. Yeah, that's so pounds. It's even more in yeah. U.S. sterling. X packs are very rare. Uh, they only did a couple of hundred X packs, um, and even if you don't get the X pack, it's still you can still get eighty percent of the way there. But this is a this is a list of ultimates. Yeah, and so for me, that is fun. These cars were. Dirt cheap for a long time. Were they really? This car would have been a hundred grand for about ten years. Wow. Here's one. This was 2019. It didn't sell for 300 in uh, RM. Yeah. And wow, that was 2019. Is it the red one? Yeah. Yeah. Pull up the red one. It looks hot in red. Black is black is very appropriate, but the red. Nice. Oh, Look that's at that. fucking murder. Nice. Is that yeah. an actual vent on the side? Is that venting or is that just yeah, yeah. It's a real, yeah, it's a real, great real functional vent? Yeah. This is like a ram air kind of situation. Yeah, it's a real, real vent. Yeah. That's that's exceptional. And I love right the there. back wing that's like going back to the old DBs. Yeah, for me, gray, blue yeah, would gorge. be where it's at. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's... Well, I'm sure the racing green probably looked pretty oh, snazz. Yeah. Of course, British yeah. racing green is absolutely where it's yeah. at. Okay. Hot, what, great what choice. What is, uh, what, is, what, is your, what is your what is your what is your website? In? <laughs> My website on, choice have on the V8 Vantage X Pack. Their third choice is the 1967 Maserati Ghibli. It's a nice car. Yeah, uh, it is a nice car. Never driven one, but it's pretty. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah, it really is. Doesn't really do it for me. I know a guy who's got one. He seems to like it. Which year? You know him, Mike. Uh, oh, recording, Mike has, recording studio. Yeah, Mike. yeah he's, he's got, got oh, one. Of course he does. He's that's, got one. That's right in his wheelhouse of <laughs> yeah. weird cars to own because that's his. Nineteen seventies <laughs> weird shit is what he buys. Specializes yeah. in. This yeah. is the '67 Maserati Ghibli that yeah. uh, they went for. Two different engines. There was a 4.7 and a 4.9. The 4.9 is massively more valuable than the 4.7. Probably double. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, says it was uh, conceptualized to commemorate Maserati's 41st anniversary and named after a North African storm. Mm. So yeah. There you go. I mean, right? very pretty car. Very, very pretty, pretty car. Yeah, very a lot cool. of uh, Ferrari Daytona in there. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. much Ferrari Daytona. Yeah. But uh, by the way, this came out before the Ferrari say. Daytona. Oh, did it really? Yeah. Who designed this? Do you know? Daytona was 71, I believe. Penned by the immortal Guigiaro. Yeah, oh. Gigiaro. Did he do the Daytona also? Gigiaro did yeah. not do the Daytona. That was Pininfarina. So, oh. Yeah. Someone nearby saw a drawing. He completed <laughs> yeah, this, was... this iconic design in three months, yeah. according to this. The the This was first. This was before the Daytona. It's beautiful. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Very, very. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm with them so on that So you sign off on that one? Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Zach? Uh, 2015 Audi RS5 4.2. No, oh, that's an Ooh. interesting choice. Yeah. <laughs> I think all-wheel drive is helpful. I think well, it's a nice car. Don't get me wrong. It's an interesting choice. I think it's bold. 
I, I think the problem with these is they were always compared against M3s and other things like that, mm -hmm. and they were really a GT car. They were not good sports cars. They were too heavy in the front. They weren't fast enough. They weren't exciting enough to drive. But when you drove one home from a shoot, you're like, yeah. ooh, this is good. All be a nice drive, car to take on a road trip. Be a great car for a road trip. Yep. And it's a little stealthy, but when you sit in, like, the seats are great, the dash yeah. is great, and you could get these with, a, I think, a manual with a 4.2, one of the you, best sounding engines ooh, ever. I don't know if you could get the RS5 with a manual. The S5 definitely could get with a manual. Could you get the RS5 <laughs> with a manual? Do, do, do. Early ones? The press car was not a manual. I remember that. Oh no, a lot of a lot of sites say swap available. Oh wait, uh, yeah. Could you get it with a manual? Cars and Bits has one. Really? With a manual? That would be nice. It says with a manual. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could get it with manual. Yeah. The uh, the very first quote one take I ever did was the Audi RS5 oh, on the that. press launch. Yep. The reason I did it like that was because they gave me one hour with the car. Ah. And that's all I had. Well, that's so just I the one take. Did what I had. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> the thing that we did. Yeah. Hits the criteria right yeah. on the numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my my fifth and final uh, car. Oh, I forgot. The current Bentley V8S. Mm. Uh, the 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 Bentley Continental GT V8S. I, I I did not choose the the speed, the W12 speed, because I think that. In all of the ways that matter, the V8S is actually just as good, and it's uh, a little more fuel efficient. I actually think it sounds a little better. It's a little lighter on its feet, but all the other things are exactly the same. And um, if it, I have been, I have taken a Bentley GT V8S on a road trip, Ugh. and there is nothing better. I, I had that on my list as well. Yeah, but it's it extraordinary. An exceptional vehicle. Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, for the Smokey 600 that I'm doing in uh, in May with Road and Track, you can sign up at experiences.roadandtrack.com. Mm. I will be driving a Bentley V8S again, even though I already drove one on one of these events. Mm. I went out of my way to get another one. But it it's broke. that good. But it broke. The breadth of that car's abilities. Like when we took it to the canyons, yeah. I had a what the fuck moment. Yeah. We oh yeah, we took. Stuff. I took. I took quick. that through the canyons. When, you did. That was the 12th. With that the, was the 12th. When we were following all of the uh, boxsters. Yeah, all the spiders. Which was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I was just in the background, like, what the? Yeah, yeah. No, that's that an car should car. not be as good at handling and yeah. going fast as it is, considering the weight. The V8S is even more agile and turns in better because it has a lighter engine up front. Um, and it, I took the V8S to Sonoma Raceway, and I ran 50 laps with it at Sonoma Raceway and absolutely shocked people with the performance on, wow. on a track. Yeah, I did it I did it for the Route to Vine last year. And I was giving ride alongs to people and they were like, <laughs> what the fuck is this car? It's crazy. Um yeah. Is that on your list as well, Zach? It was. Uh, so all right, so I have a different fifth then. Oops, wrong button. Uh, okay, there, the, the fourth from these guys is the, this is going to polarize the room, uh, the 1963 Porsche 911. I understand that. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I mean... As a GT? A 911 can be a lot of things. Okay. I, I wouldn't choose a first year 911. Sure. I probably would want something a little later than that. But like, yeah, if you want to go on a road trip in an old car, a 911 is a great choice. It's comfortable. It's refined. They're very reliable. Yeah. They hold a bunch of stuff. I, I I could see how that would mm -hmm. that would be fine. Right. Yeah. I I wanted to add the Targa, the one we all drove oh, actually yeah, 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 yeah. the same day. Yeah. But I went, it's a sports car. But ooh, is it a great? Yeah, GT no, I car. think that, a, I, that I, would be a great. That would be a great. I car. wouldn't put up a fight. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't. No, I, you you could put almost any 911 right. in there, and I wouldn't put up a fight. I, I I get it. There's a reason that so many people on these road and track events that I do. 50% of all the cars that come are 911s. 911s. Yeah. They're, I mean, and it's because for all these reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, and sometimes it's a Carrera convertible. Sometimes it's a Targa. Sometimes it's a GT3. Sometimes it's a Turbo S. Like, and they all have fun. Like, so I, I get it. Makes total sense. Zach, what is your what is final? Your final one, I'll go a little more vintage. Oh, look at that. 635 Ooh. CSI. Yep. It is Bold. one of the prettiest things. Yeah, but gorgeous. But tall greenhouse, visibility is amazing. Inline six, it's yep. going to be smooth and quiet. Uh, I'd go Euro bumpers, of course. 182 horsepower, not a ton, not but much. once you're up to speed, who cares? What about That's the Alpina right. turbo version? I wanted to use that, but we used that on our <laughs> German did. tuners or our uh, European tuners show, yeah, and yeah. I thought I shouldn't be redundant. 
But, yeah. But yeah, put a turbo on it and you're in business. Alpina but, Alpina B7 2. Point, or 3.5 turbo uh, would be my choice. I mean, is there that. anything more perfect than those wheels? Those uh, the wheels, Alpina wheels. The, the, Alpina, the Alpina wheels. wheels. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I, and I'm not usually an Alpina wheel fan, but the ones I've on I've seen on, on the these 80s cars, cars are ooh, that works. Because they're no hot. they're not too big. They're not. You know, when you, you right, got to leave a little meat on the rubber. Yeah, the newer ones are yeah. just a little more racy profiling. Well, Zuckerman got himself, as he does, a, a mint, mint, mint Euro spec version of the. His is an M6, and it's awesome. It's got some real special. Some I don't know where I don't know why where it has this. I've never seen it before. Some special order buffalo hide fucking mm, leather course, or something that's like untreated and like natural oh, hides wow. it looks almost oh, like the ford like king ranch leather uh it's unbelievable look at you're not ready I'm, I'm, i wasn't ready for this picture with how good this car looks this is 85 m oh. 85 m6 wow with alpina wheels some later alpina wheels yeah but yeah. they work they do. They work. God, that yeah. front Maybe end. Maybe an inch smaller, actually. but uh, I would go downsize one inch on yeah, that, I but too. I'll still, I don't hate it. Yeah. It I, looks good. I like the spoke. That front end is so good. Shark nose, man. That's what so that's good. what BMW is attempting to do with the current M3 and failing, failing badly at yeah. it. Yeah. Wait till you see the uh, the video that we made with this car. <laughs> it's good. It's good. We did there's a good a, one. There's a, it's pretty funny. All right, BHP's final choice final one, is yeah. the 1967 Toyota 2000 GT. Ooh. No. Hard, hard fucking no. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> not. I mean. And I'll tell you why. Please, as you, you should. You ever see one of these in person? No. Oh, no, I have. Yes. Yeah. See, I see love how, it. See how there's all these photos of it on this on this thing? Make sure everyone can see the screen, Zach. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> all these photos of it. What is absent? People. Anything else other than the car. <laughs> size comparison. That car is tiny. Looks like it's the size of a fucking Daytona. And it's tiny. It's the size of a Suzuki Cappuccino. Is it really? It's I mean, it's a little longer than that, but it's basically Miata size. They're fucking tiny. If you're over 5'4, fucking <laughs> forget it, bro. Remember they used one as a bond car once? Oh yeah. And what did they do to it? Took the top off. They cut. They cut it into a convertible. Yeah, yeah. Because nobody can fit in the goddamn thing. Yeah, it was like Doctor No or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was tiny. it is nine inches longer than an NA Miata. Yeah. Wow. A Miata, Miata plus this. It's t it's a tiny little car for tiny little people, and fucking no GT car can be that small. Absolutely not. Look, none of none of these photos. <laughs> Look at it there compared to the Porsche 904. Look at that that one. Next to a 9 oh, uh, it's a Dino, I'm sorry, in the small screen. Dino's small. Dino's are tiny. Yeah. Where's and one? that is it next to a Dino. Yeah, you're right. There's not one photo with a person Look at, it, that it, you look can at the one on the it. drive in the middle there on the racetrack. Look at the size of the fucking helmet. Helmet. Yeah, no, it's huge. The helmet. <laughs> <laughs> helmet for scale. The top to bottom, you oh, can't yeah, see ridiculous. the helmet in the windshield. No. It's so... <laughs> God, that's it's that's my that favorite is... <laughs> helmet for scale. You cannot see. Oh my God, it's that's the great! Car ever. The helmet is half the height of the entire yeah. vehicle. Yeah. He's he's hitting his head on the roof. Yeah, yeah the definitely. roof line has been and adjusted. I'm not saying it's a dirty bubble cool develops. Or it's a great car, but or collectible. GT? Absolutely not. So they they if got it right. Bra that's Brad Williams' GT car. So <laughs> So they got one out of five, which was yeah. the uh, well, no, the Porsche the Ghibli, you'd give it to, and the Ghibli and the Ghibli, Ghibli uh, yeah. push. So they two out of five. They wouldn't make my list, but the, uh, there are other choices I hate. So if you guys had to do one out of your selection, which one are you going for? Where are we going for the GT? For yeah, like, no, but where? Where are we? Um, it, let's, we're going to go up north. We're going from Los Angeles to yeah. Monterey yeah. for Car Week. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, Ferrari, no, no question. Okay, I yeah. would take the Aston. Oh, for that, yeah, yeah. bold. That yeah, would be yeah. a good run. If I if, like, yeah, that's like a fifth car. That's not a second car, you know. But but still, that's what you that's, that's what you want to be. Because I, you go to Monterey, uh, Ferrari, a Porsche, mainstream, a little too predictable. You want to show up at something that's going to lift some eyebrows. There's going to be maybe one other V8 Vantage up there the whole week. Forget an X Pack. Right. You don't see those. You don't see those on the road, ever. But if you want to do two thousand miles. Oh, the Ferrari is... Bentley, maybe. I don't know. The Ferrari or the Bentley, yeah. for sure. I'd go cross-country to 575, but that's on the season. That Bentley GT... Mm. Depends on the season, I think. The Bentley, is, you can go anywhere. You can yeah. go to Newfoundland. A winter... Right. I would winter road trip that Bentley all fucking day. Mm -hmm. That's the... They're the best. They make a hell of a car.
Uh, all right. Well, if you have, uh, if you have, uh, you could disagree with us. You have other fucking, you got problems with us. Leave a comment. Let's hear your choices for top five GT cars uh, in the uh, in the old YouTube comments or the Patreon comments, whatever. And speaking of Patreon, you in a hurry, Christian? You no. Go? Okay. No. Speaking of Patreon, let's get to that. Got a bunch of questions. Of course, if you want to ask them questions, patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. Mm-hmm. Get uh, get the episodes early. Get them ad free. Ask us questions. Watch the live stream. Get early access to merch drops like these awesome fucking pens we had going on. Uh, we're going to do another round of the pens. We're going to change it up. Different pen. But uh, but people really like the pens and they sold out in like What's two the, days. Uh, oh, it's good weight. It's good weight. It's a great weight. Titanium. Yeah. So we have a, we did a steel one, but it was too heavy. And that bolt action thing is ooh, it's pretty good. Nice. So we're going to do another round of the pens. Uh, David Bodenstein says, uh, after the Morgan episode last week, what's your opinion or experience with Wiesmann? Uh, I've, I've never, I've seen one in person. I've never driven one. You know what those are? Nope. Sort of a German, uh, it's not really like Morgan, but it's sort of these coach built, uh, roadsters. Oh. They're cool looking. I mean, I, I, I agree with a lot of their design choices. Uh. It's sort of like a. A TVR with German yeah, build yeah, I was quality. Say. Uh, for a while, they were using like BMW. Jesus Christ, yeah, pop up ads. <laughs> Fuck you, pop up ads. Every time I go down, uh, they seem really there interesting. Yeah, um, I've seen one on the road ever. Never what's driven the, uh, one. What's the engine in those? So their new one is electric, which that one is, oh, okay. which I am not excited about. Right. But uh, typically in the past, BMW V8s and V10s. All right. They so, used the 4.4 a lot, didn't they? Use they used the 4.4. They used, Ooh, they used it looks the, pretty from that angle, that's for a, sure. That's a great one, yeah. That is in their historic models yeah. category, so... I think that one yeah. might have been the V8, but they... That one's called the uh, go down. Does it have the... Does it go down on, on the page? Does it say what it is? Uh, da, 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 I don't... I don't, I, I don't... I'm not... That one, that one, looks, that one looks great. Uh, that one, 555 horsepower twin turbo Ooh, engine. That's a lot. Uh, I don't know what it's twin turbo, but that's that seems pretty gnarly. That is yeah. insane. They look cool. Yeah, love to drive one. Maybe I'll have to find a way. I don't know where in Germany they're built, but uh, let's see. Ivan says, should automakers take nameplates and try to perfect it, or keep changing it in the search of perfection? Example: the 911 mm-hmm. versus the AMG and M. Wait. Change Basically, the like they're saying, the like name? the 911 formula, you know, versus where the M3 or the AMG, where it's a completely new from scratch car every year, with the same badge on it. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously, the inline or the inline the the flat six engine is what makes those 911s unique. The rear engine is so Porsche has already done this for so long. They have to. But that's also. But AMG is. A tuning shop or a tuning class of cars from Mercedes. Right. 911 is an individual model. That's, like, you that's know, a good M point. Is M, well, there's been one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six, eight, right? There's been an M. Yeah, I mean, one there's, through eight. they emify all the right. all of the cars. So, so that's a good. That's a very good point. And let's not forget that for, that a couple of times Porsche was about to kill the 911. For other cars, and then changed course. Remember, the 928 was supposed to replace the 911, and then the people were not about right. that life, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so it didn't. And so, um, I mean, I happen to, I mean, uh, I, I think there's arguments for both. If you were to say instead of M, you'd say the M3, which went from naturally aspirated six cylinder engines to V8 to turbocharged six cylinder engines. There's being, a, you know, sort of more variety there. And mm-hmm. but um, the co- engine configuration of the 911 is so unique and o- po- puts has obvious advantages that they should keep sticking with that. And apparently, I mean, the engine design of flat six whether it's turbocharged or NA, has proven to be a really potent thing that they can turn up to 500 horsepower. Yeah. I don't think you could have turned an inline six to 500 horsepower without adding turbos, without the thing exploding. Yeah. So that's also a great advantage they have. Yeah. Uh, for Christian, how much more complicated is it to build the sound system for the sphere versus a big stadium stage? Uh, night and day. I mean, you know, for a big stadium stage, you're just basically still dealing with your bog standard left and right. 
and you just need solid bass. You know, <clears throat> Peter Gabriel paid to have the turbo sound system created, which was the first time that they were using uh, servos instead of speaker cones in the same way. The sphere is crazy because each of the 162,000 speakers has a subwoofer built into it. Mm. So the whole, I didn't, you know, didn't want to, I wanted to talk to Joe about it, but didn't get to. I would be, the question I want is how much more fucking crazy is it to mix on a system with 163,000 speakers where you mm. can, as I pointed out to Matt, like he can, he's flying things into different areas around the room, like the strings in Beautiful Day and all that are yeah. hanging over your head. So, I mean, there's so much more freedom from that, but I would imagine that it's a, a bit of a nightmare. But there must be a software interface that makes that easier yeah you're steering it like you yeah. would steer in a in a, a surround sound system in your house where yeah. it's steering it to different places yeah but there's you can probably make those a touch choices. screen where you can target stuff and this yeah software. when i was there there were like six mixing desks right <laughs> which is something i've never seen before you know yeah. like it's it's usually like one with another proco wow. and then another guy backup but like also redundancy yeah. right. when you get that. hired like each of you are managing twenty five thousand speakers individually <laughs> right. yeah uh, then uh, but meeting this morning to coordinate Jeez. So that would be my answer. Way we saw to do the it. map. There's a there's a map that they have of the screen, which is divided into twenty four sections or thirty six sections, and part of Julia's job is to watch the screen and if anything is off, like radio in, like what's off, and she like knows what every section is, but they're not like marked. Like wow. you have to be able to look at the screen, yeah. and like know that that's like C12, but like without knowing where the borders of C12 are. Wow. It's pretty crazy. And each of the component pieces of the screen are different sizes. So they have yeah, to have yeah. their, their replacements. They can't have like 24 replacements. They have to have replacements for all of them because they're all different I mean, imagine dynamics. looking at a map of the U.S., right? But there's no lines defining the states. And, and a little red light goes on somewhere on the map. Without mm -hmm. any lines, and you have to tell them what state that's, that's Ohio. in. That's mm -hmm. Ohio. <laughs> like, that's nuts. Yeah, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have a picture of what Justin oh, Gerard is talking about? Justin Gerard said he saw the worst spec boxster he's ever seen and wants our thoughts on it. Let's uh, let's see what this photo is. Uh, it's green. Is that green? Yeah. Right? That's it is. That's uh, Kermit Green. It's Kermit Green. And but what it makes also, it, it has a, Well, it has a burgundy top. Burgundy top. Oh, is, and oh that's gold right. wheels. <laughs> Could you not see all I, those colors? I mean, it's hard for me to see it on, on this screen. <laughs> I will it, tell you, it is horrendous. It's not good. The burgundy top is something that doesn't really look good on Most. Almost, almost any car. Maybe if it was silver. Yeah. If the car was silver, you could do yeah, it. Or in white, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, with gold rims, gold wheels, green and burgundy. Yeah, it's it's not great. <sighs> it's mostly the green. It's it's kind of like uh, what it not. It's a little bit more aqua than Lee Keen's um, yeah. Kermit green, which is not. So it's not a good color to start. It's actually the same green as the icon at the top by Imager. Yeah. That's funny where it says. So would, would that be PTS? Did somebody actually choose that green? Probably. Yeah, probably. It's for my wife. Uh, <laughs> go, is it? Go, is it oh, that's just uh, that's just the photo. It's not the actual listing. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I, I would say it's not great, but um, I mean, I don't think it's the worst I've seen. I've seen bad, but you know what? Yeah, someone drove it forty three thousand miles. So if, they, it, if somebody it made picked the first it. person happy, like. Yeah. You know, I don't really give a shit. That's but, a tough uh, sell. Mm -hmm. That's a, that is uh, a tough sell though to, to get. It's a tough sell to offload you, that. But like, you could, you could buy that pretty cheap and wrap it. Sure. You know, yep. and and probably, and if you change the color of the wheels, that would help. Like, you know, there's stuff you could do to. You could probably wrap it for the same price as getting new wheels though. If you're getting yeah, wheels yeah. at that price, you yeah. just get it wrapped in. If a you wrap color. it, you know, silver. Yeah, to match the matte silver with it, that could look kind of cool. Yeah, there, that goes right? with the yeah. burgundy. Uh, Christian says Lucid lowered the lease price <laughs> again to six ninety nine to for the pure. I just wrote down. I saw this question before, and I wrote down book Lucid Pure. Um, Alejandro says, "Is the Sphere worth it as a touristic tra attraction at a hundred to two hundred dollars for tickets for the demo sh house demo show?" No, is that the movie thing? Yeah, the movie. I mean, yeah, that's actually a good question. I for a hundred bucks to go and see the movie. 
don't go to see the movie. Go to see the cool shit that happens on the enormous screen and the haptic seats and the smell. The movie itself is an absolute bag of fucking wank. It's terrible. And but we to, checked on IMDb reviews. It's not just Christian saying this. The <laughs> average is like 2.5 out of 10. Yeah. yeah it's and it's average. Aronofsky who is brilliant. Like, I love Aronofsky's films, but it's absolutely- And you saw the movie. Yeah, I went to see the movie. What, is, what, is, the, what is the movie? The, so the basically, con- the conceit of the movie is uh, a bunch of- So they, they also designed that camera specifically for Oh, the, yeah. Go back to the Instagram, Zach. The, we, we punched over this, but this is really cool. Go back to the, like, the middle of the photos. This, right that. That. So that's called the Blue Sky Camera, and it's a camera designed just to film the sphere. So MSG paid for the development, the millions of dollars to develop this thing to shoot in 16K. And by the way, the, where this is before the show, where it looks like you're just seeing bare sphere, that's fake. That's, yeah, on, that's right. the screen. The screen is showing that. Yeah, so that's what, that's additionally what blows people's minds. And then there's like a, there's three jokes inside it where the so this goes up to what appears to be a hole to the skylight. It's and fake. At, at, which is fake. And at some point, a fake helicopter flies over. And then there's a there's a flashing work light in the sphere that's actually a gig. It's a joke. It's that's not. Funny. That's so great. It's, and then there's a pigeon that flies through that looks like it's really flying through. Awesome. So that is. That's what happens is people walk in and they see this bare concrete and they're like, what do they project the images on there? And then the first the first gag is the band starts to play and it all crumbles and dust falls and the whole thing. So this so camera cool. is 16K specifically to shoot Aronofsky's film, which is it's a loose fucking terrible storyline to justify showing a bunch of amazing footage of the planet. Mm. And the thing is, we destroy the planet. We fly to Mars. We go around the, the, the universe, uh, putting human beings everywhere, garbage. There's like a fucking Adam and Eve subtext, which is shit. But then the, the, the thing that made me and my best friend, so look at one of my best friends, just look at each other and be like, what? Was that a certain select few get to return back to Earth to climb mountains and go on hikes and to experience it like a nature preserve. So wait, is there a plot? There's a plot to yeah, this? Yeah, okay. but it's not. Okay. But there is. It's like, a, if you gave a fifth grader yeah. a plot, and you know, Aronofsky's a fucking but genius. should they just do fucking underwater movies yeah. with Sting soundtracks and just have it be it's, that? That's all it should have been, yeah, is yeah. it should have been the, An IMA- the, you know, the original IMAX, IMAX yeah, concept. Yeah. yeah. When just you went that. and you saw Michael Jordan bouncing yeah, the ball yeah. and he was like six stories tall. Yeah. That's all. That's what I thought we were walking into. Instead, it's literally this garbage science fiction movie oh, that the sci-fi yeah. channel would have been like, fuck, come on, man, yeah, we can't right. do this. All right. So it's, but I would pay a hundred bucks to see the sphere in that way because the fidelity of the images is actually greater than the fidelity of the U2 images. Okay. Yeah. So I would I would do it. Uh, Isaiah says recently rented a 718 Boxster T on Turo, 90K MSRP. What is the closest experience to that car for under 50K? I mean, what's I, whatever I the bo- nicest what, Boxster. Whatever the nicest Boxster is that 50K will get you. Yep. Um, pretty much. Boom. Uh, Crystal bar th- ball thoughts are a used Rivian R2. That's not even out yet. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, that's the new smaller one, right? Yeah, I don't I don't even know I don't even know what that looks like. Or I've, I've never even seen it. No idea. That's scratch that one off. That one don't count. Um Tuffode, graduated college, planning on getting an M2 or used M3, now leaning towards an F type S, V6 or V8. I'm not sure. Uh this would be my daily. I have a first gen Grand Cherokee for other truck needs. Uh concern is reliability. Um I haven't heard a lot of horror stories about these Jags. I mean, my mom's got one. She loves it. I'm sure they have needs because they're going to be used European cars. But, like, I've not heard bad things about these Jaguars. I think F-types are well-made, and the engines are pretty good. Um, I actually like the V6S better than the V8s. Mm -hmm. Um, you find a manual, that would be really nice. The supercharged V8 is too much. It's a lot. It's too much. Yeah, and then when they changed lot. it to all-wheel drive, that was kind of a weird all-wheel drive system. So Yeah. I, I, I like them. And uh, just watched the new uh, the newest Grand Tour video. I haven't watched that. Uh, which is... Sans job. Yeah. Don't spoil it for me. I do want to watch it, so don't well, tell me Well, let me just end. say that uh, Jeremy Clarkson turns an F-Type into a safari car 
and Got very, Simon's very trailer. much enjoys it. That would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'd be great. So uh, Tim says, for someone just getting into watches, how do you rate a Tag Heuer Carrera as an everyday watch? Lovely watch. No notes. Great everyday watch. Um, just I wouldn't I wouldn't take one like scuba diving. The water resistance isn't isn't really there, but that's fine for everything. What's else, the resistance on this notice? Two hundred meters. Okay, good. Can die. Can scuba dive in it. Will. Uh, Jake Gerbino, have we driven the AMG A thirty five? I never have. I asked for a press car multiple times, never drove one. Forty five was it. Um, I'm sorry, we've not driven one. Uh, Pugs and Porsches, did you get paint protection for strawberry shortcake? Yes, it has full paint protection film with ammo reflex coating on the film. So Boom. We have we do have that. I put I do paint protection film on all my modern cars. I did ammo reflex on the Bentley and the Ferrari uh, and the Lamborghini without the film because you don't want to put film on old cars. Uh, the Ineos hey, Grenadier. We saw multiple uh, saw car, truck. multiple car carriers going from L.A. to Vegas with Ineos Grenadiers on them. I saw one on the road the other yeah. day. I was surprised. I mean, we're I, driving it soon, aren't we? I'm trying to get one. They said that as soon as they have one in L.A., they would get us on. All right. Uh, I saw a guy at Good Vibes that had one and bought it and was very happy with it. I read Andrew Frankel's mm-hmm. two reviews for the intercooler. He was a little mixed on it. Uh, he liked some things and didn't like other things, and I do trust what Andrew Frankel has to say. Yeah. He likes his second review was about a bunch of the revisions they did, and they had yeah. gotten a lot better, but yeah. still aren't perfect. Um, I mean, I think that people want trucky SUVs. I think that's, yeah. a, that's a growing demand of people who do not want a, a, an aerodynamic egg. Mm-hmm. They want a, a more traditional-looking SUV. The success of the Bronco, the G-Wagon, all of that. Uh, and this is... I mean, it's it, it looks like a Defender until you put one next to a Defender. It looks different. I think the interior is really neat. It's got all these aircraft-style toggles and, like, big buttons that you could hit with gloves on. And um, I think it looks cool. Uh, Do you I, think Land Rover fucked up with this redesign? The, no, the current the, Defender? Yeah. It's no, selling so well. I think well. it's great. It's selling they're really selling well. A, they're selling it's a ton of them, and they're them. lovely to drive. Yeah. Right. Um, but I... But yeah, I think you're right about the trucky trucks. People want trucky trucks. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I have absolutely no idea about Tortelli's question about mid-level 5 Series BMWs. I'm sorry. I just don't know. Uh, Chappie just appreciated you through COVID. Wants uh, to say hi. Thanks, man. I appreciate uh, that. Devin Ward, a, this is a weird thing to say, or to, to read. Devin uh, bought a 93 Subaru WRX Type RA and I'm in the middle of a restoration. Whoa. In the middle of a true barn find, hauled it out of a collapsed barn. Will 90s era vehicles be the last of the barn find generation? Certainly not. Certainly not. No. Cars will always, always be, be left barns. in places <laughs> and and be able to be found later. Um I mean, what what gems might we be expect to be? The thing about a barn find is it's like it's often unpredictable. It's just right. it's random shit. That's the nature so, of the beast. Yeah, it's it, and it's well, it may be less prevalent as we get twenty years because what cars get stuck in barns when people become too old or like sick or whatever to drive them, and as cars get easier and easier to drive. You know, like sure. without manual transmissions, without manu- pa- manual steering and stuff, it's it's the the set of conditions that would make you unable to drive the car <laughs> shrinks. Right. You know? but I think you know he said our '90s car is going to. I think there's plenty of cars in the 2000s that can be left in barns. Any enthusiast vehicle, like let's think or E39 M5, 2000 uh, two, S2000, shit like that, that will could end up in a barn because it's still an enthusiast mm-hmm. car that could be forgotten about for a while. Yeah. I think once we get into the 2020s, you know, everything's kind of an appliance. Yeah. And electric. Yeah. Yeah, barn finds are going to be also like getting them up and running will be harder, right? Sure. With all when the it's computers, computers and fucking screens and all that bullshit. Yes. It's, you know, it's like we, you're going to need like a nerdy Donnie who can like code in a, in, yeah. a, in, a, yeah. in, a in an airplane for hanger sure. out in the desert. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I mean, the days of like you pull this thing out of a barn, you spray some starter fluid yeah, yeah. in there, hook up a new battery, and it <laughs> starts. <laughs> like, Gone. That will not happen. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot more cars will have the experience that 
McLaren F1s have, where you need that special computer. Yeah. So there's that, that's what's going to be happening with. Right. I think they've the learned cars. from that, where maybe you don't need the actual computer, but just a software program with more regular interface. That early '90s shit, where you need the physical yeah. compact laptop right, right. that CPU is hard coded for this thing. Yeah. And, you know, I think I feel like for most modern cars, like a PC with a variety of dongles and shit, will be able to do it. That's true. I think you'll need that because. One of the big things with the right to work, uh, or was it right to rent right laws? To repair. Right to repair laws is the shops, you know, are they going to keep these computers that can fix something that's yeah. 10 years old or 20 years old? Yeah. And if and if they're in these shops, like part of, the, part of the OEMs were making it more difficult for independent shops to get the software or the computing power to plug in and fix a new car. So I think the prevalence of those computers will kind of determine how these, bind, right. how these barn finds go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and cars are, are getting a little more disposable, you know, just what they're made of. Um, you know, so you, it's, when a car is just made of metal and wood and leather, it will last longer in a in a barn than something sure. that's made of right. wires and computers and stuff like that. The elements may be a little kinder to that stuff. And you can, you can actually – the key to a barn find is that you can repair shit. And not just replace it. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see. Uh, last one. Mm -hmm. Chris says, uh, when I got the Focus RS, I think, well, your memory of this incident is not actually accurate. I got a Focus RS. I immediately hated it. <laughs> it's what happens. It's a lesson I learned. Don't ever buy another car again without driving it first. Ah. I didn't go on the press launch but I, I loved my Fiesta ST, and everyone who I knew who was at Ford said, wait till you try the Focus RS, even better. They were lying, or just wrong. It was not better, it was worse. Um, I tried to get out of it, and I tried to trade it for a diesel F-Pace. Uh, he says, I, I know your thoughts about the RS. Do you ever wish I would have got the experience of the F-Pace because it feels like it kind of came and went? It went because I couldn't get out of the lease. So really don't get a car you've never driven. Really don't lease a car you've never driven because now you're stuck with it if you don't like wow, it. You, you leased it sight unseen? Yeah. If I had well, bought, undriven? If I bought it, <laughs> I, if I bought it and hated it, right, I could have flipped it. I could have flipped, not dumped it. I could have flipped it because oh, wow. I got an early one. It was high demand. I probably could have made five or ten grand. Could have flipped it and, and been done with it in two seconds. This is very unmatched. Instead, Farrah. yeah, lesson learned. I, yeah. I learn lessons by fucking up, my friend. That's how I learn. Uh, the diesel F pace, like the thing about the F pace was, I thought I could trade my car back to Galpin, and I really liked the F pace when I went on the launch. It's a lovely thing, actually. They drive really good, and they had one, and. For a moment, it seemed like if I, I could trade the RS back to them and they could buy out the lease and then sell it as a used car and get me into this F-Pace. But when that didn't happen, like, I forget why, but, like, Ford Credit, like, wouldn't allow that to happen. And so I just, like, well, all right. So I'm stuck with this thing. How long were you stuck with? Three years? Two years. Oh, two years. Eventually, someone wanted it enough to buy out my lease and I sold it to them. But, like... I don't, I don't like necessarily wish I had the, the, the diesel F pace experience because I ended up making content out of the Focus RS and it's whatever, and like I've driven F paces, like I know what they are. Like I don't think a long term experience would have necessarily been uh, a worthwhile bit of content. So it just kind of, it just is what it is. I, uh, I, I moved on from it, but I, F paces are still nice. So, um, thank you, patrons. Uh, Zach, is there anything else that I would have missed? No, that's it. That was the end. All right. Yeah, Thanks for joining us, Christian. Thank you. Uh, keep uh, ears peeled for good news on the session podcast. Yeah, but you're, until then, you're on Twitch. Until then, I'm on Twitch every night at the Twitch set or every weeknight at the Twitch sessions. So join me for that. And also it's the Twitch sessions. The Twitch sessions. The yep. Twitch sessions. You can, um, you can get Christian's show. It's like three hours a night of hanging out and doing a session and then playing music videos and telling the history of industrial music and all that, which is so much fun. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, Free shows in Hollywood still at the Bourbon Room. Next one will be March 17th, which will be uh, The Outcast, which is The Outfield and Outcast. Free tickets. If you want those, just go to the session website.com, and there's a ticket link there usually. That'll I be go going to up. most of them. 
Uh, and then, uh, yeah, this is why I couldn't. Uh, that's why I couldn't grab the session as mm -hmm. a uh, as, as something. Wait, what is your have. website? The session website. It's, oh, it's called, literally it's called the session, the session website. Website dot com. Yeah. That's a, that was a uh, suggestion from my ex manager John Mayer. <laughs> so uh, there will be a free ticket link up there. Come out on March seventeenth. Uh, thank you so much for having me, fellas, and thank you so much thank for coming for, out, Matthew. I'm glad you, for you enjoyed me yourself. To the, not the sphere. Just to sphere. Because that's branding. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for taking me to sphere because <laughs> you sound like you don't know how to speak when you say that to people. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And Zach, hope that burrito was really good. Great fucking burrito, dude. I hope that burrito was in 16K. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like, <laughs> and Mike McCready was right yeah. outside. With 167,000 <laughs> pinto beans yeah. in it. <laughs> Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, by the time you listen to this, I'll be in Spain by driving Panamera Turbo Hybrid. I'll be back for next week's shows. Hopefully. Bye.